Hello, this is Douglas Rumbaugh, and welcome to the next video in my Configuring Pop! OS series. In this video, we are going to take a look at GNOME Shell extensions. Uh, specifically, I'm going to show you the extensions that I tend to use and how to install them. Now, to do this, we are going to need to launch a web browser. This web browser is going to have to accept extensions. So you can use a Chromium-based web browser or you can use the Firefox. Unfortunately, at this time, you cannot use Epiphany or pretty much any of the WebKit GTK web browsers as they tend not to work with extensions. And believe it or not, you need an extension to be able to, a browser extension to install these GNOME extensions. And I, it's, it's to no end of amusement to me that you can't use the GNOME standard web browser to install GNOME shell extensions because it itself doesn't support extensions. So you're going to want to make sure, in Firefox anyway, you're going to want to go to extensions.gnome.org, click on the click here to install extension, and just hit continue, and it will install the extension and add it. And you now get the little GNOME logo going on right here. So now we are able to install extensions from the web browser. So what are some extensions that you should look at? Well, I don't use it. I have it set up, but I don't really use it. Um, GS Connect is really nice because it allows you to connect up with the KDE Connect for application for Android. And you can get notifications all from your phone on your computer and you can send texts from your computer and, and all kinds of things like that. It works relatively well. I just found that it was more annoying than anything. I'm not a big fan of notifications, as it turns out. In fact, if we look, I basically live on my computer with notifications silenced because they're just distracting. So I wound up not actually uh, using that very much. But I, I do have it, and it is quite nice. It might be worth looking at. I may do a, a video on setting up KDE Connect at some point. It's quite nice. But as far as other extensions, Caffeine is quite nice. We'll open that in a new tab. So what Caffeine allows you to do is it allows you to disable, well, the screen saver and auto suspend. So it just gives you a little logo up in the corner and you can click it and it will prevent your computer from going to sleep. So by default, if you have a full screen application running, GNOME will do this already. But if you are watching, say, a YouTube video that's not full screened or something like that, it is nice to be able to just click on the little coffee cup and prevent your computer from sleeping. Uh, or maybe if you just have some terminals pulled open that you're monitoring from time to time, this could also be quite nice for that. So just go ahead and click on the toggle and click install. And that's it. Caffeine is now installed. So. My computer is capable of going to sleep. Auto suspend and screensaver disabled. And enabled and disabled. It is as easy as that. And that is caffeine. Highly recommended. Next up, we have a variety of different extensions for, as a matter of fact, let me just uh, go back to here, for allowing you to select audio devices. So by default, you have a volume slider here, and that is the extent of your audio controls. Now this is probably okay if you're running a computer that has like a set of speakers, but my computer has a headset and a desk microphone and a web camera or two and a, uh, a USB audio interface and all kinds of sound devices hooked up to it. And having a convenient way to pick what your input and output default devices are is really handy. So having a sound input output device chooser is a very useful thing to do. Now, as you can see, we have a couple options. Uh, the first one that comes up here is this sound input output device chooser. This actually is, I, I use this one for a little bit, but it's not the one that I'm using right now. Uh, the one that I'm currently using is actually called Audio Switcher. This guy right here, I believe. So we'll go ahead and turn this guy on and show you what that looks like. So Audio Switcher 
as you can see, has a very minimal interface. It gives you access to a microphone and speaker volume slider, and you can click on the little drop down to select your devices. Uh, to show you perhaps a slightly more interesting set of options, here we have the ability to switch my output device, and here the ability to select an input device. Now, I like the audio switcher more than the other one, just because it has a more minimalistic set of uh, sound devices. So the the um, come here. Da -da -da. So the sound input output device chooser. This is this one's the chooser. Um, it has more of a. It's a slightly less user friendly interface. It, and it will list multiple different like variants of certain devices. So it's, it's, it's more, it gives you more control, but for my purposes, again, I don't like clutter and for all intents and purposes, just this list is sufficient. I don't need the, the audio, the, the selection between analog versus digital of the same thing and all that stuff. Uh, so I don't really use this one anymore. And we'll go ahead and turn that off. Um, I just use the the audio switcher. Okay, another extension that is quite nice to have is Vitals. Now Vitals is going to allow you, matter of fact, this up here is Vitals. It's fairly configurable, but it allows you to look at sensor output from a variety of different pieces of your hardware. So right now I just have it configured to show CPU utilization, memory utilization, and CPU temperature, but you can configure it to have all kinds of stuff. So we'll go ahead and turn that one on. There we go. And as you can see, by default, it shows up over here. Although you have the option in settings to place it on the left-hand side of the panel. So you can, you can put the, the vitals output either on the left the center or on the right. So you can toggle it where you want it and configure from there. I encourage you to just poke around through these things, see what options you have. So the other note, the other extension that I have, which I highly recommend is a uh, window is ready notification remover. So this is going to be something that is difficult for me to demonstrate, but what happens is when you have a, a window that isn't active and something in that window updates, that application will send a window is ready notification through GNOME. So for example, I use Signal and I have Signal Desktop. And when you have Signal Desktop and it's not focused, it's running in the background, when you get a message on Signal, you will actually get two notifications you will get a window is ready notification from Signal, and then you will also get the incoming message notification. So all this thing does is it removes that window is ready notification. So in the case of say Signal, you only get the one notification, not, not two of them. So I highly recommend this notification remover as well. And those are basically it for the extensions that I use in my own um, my own setup of pop. Uh, I guess the only other exception would be on my laptop. I run one called CPU Power Manager. This guy right here, which isn't super useful, I don't think, on a desktop computer. Let's go ahead and install this. Yeah, it's not even supported inside of this virtual machine. Uh, let me go ahead and just turn this thing on so I can show it to you on my actual computer here. There we go. So this thing right here. So this this is going to allow you to configure the um, to easily configure the frequency of your CPU as like minimum maximum frequencies as well as turn turbo boost on and off or set from a couple of different presets. You know you have high performance, multimedia, quiet energy saver. You have a variety of options here for adjusting the frequencies. And that's useful, not so much on a desktop computer, but it is useful on laptops. So you can drop it into energy saver mode or something if you need more battery life. 
so I run that on my um, on my lemur my lemur pro uh, another extension that you might consider although I used it for a little while and then stopped is an extension that makes these icons closer go closer together as you can see by default there's a fair amount of space between these extension icons up here and it looks kind of weird to me to have them spaced out like that so there is there are extensions that allow you to um, to make them closer together one example of these extensions is this one the status area horizontal spacing so as you can see up here I have a fair amount of horizontal spacing between my different icons if I install this thing turn her on nothing happens by default however if I run my mouse over the icons you can see they shrink together and it clears up some of that space so that is it's useful in or it's it makes it look a little bit better however the problem the problem with it is that oftentimes these icons will re-expand themselves when something updates and then you have to go up and swipe over it with your mouse constantly to keep them in the same spot where it, they're together and they look nice so to be completely honest with you I stopped using that too and just deal with the extra space as you can see I just turned it off and I can update them again by just running my mouse over them and so if you use one of these you're gonna have to keep running your mouse back and forth over these things as they expand and contract to keep them looking in the same way alright and those are the gnome shell extensions that I use fairly regularly as well as some commentary on other ones so with all of that said uh, just a word of warning when it comes to extensions uh, extensions can and do break particularly when gnome is updated so if you're planning on playing around with these things I would encourage you to avoid integrating extension functionality too tightly into your workflow uh, it's a recipe for anguish when gnome updates and your extension breaks and it takes the maintainer of the extension several days or weeks to release an update that then makes the extension work again uh, the extensions that I use are purely either slight convenience like uh, like caffeine or my audio device switcher or purely informational like vitals I don't use extensions that give me a launcher or a taskbar or a an application menu like a, a Windows style start menu those all exist and some people like them but I, I feel like it makes my computing experience too fragile uh, and I just like the stock gnome experience so that would be my one word of warning with respect to extensions is they are fragile so so be careful with them with that said that's all that I have on the topic of extensions so I hope that you found this interesting and as always I will see you in the next one